power of God, but they will be subdued because the power of God will be there in the name of Jesus Christ to break every yoke and to break every devices of the wicked one in the name of Jesus Christ let us take authority in the name of Jesus Father in the name of Jesus Christ we take authority over every devices of the wicked one over every challenges that the wicked one will bring to test the power your power, O oh Lord. Father, we take authority over them in the name of Jesus and we bring them into subjection in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we take authority and we cover the fellowship with the blood of Jesus. We cover the fellowship with the blood of Jesus. We take authority over every contrary spirit and we bring them into subjection to the obedience of God's word in the name of Jesus that as the word of God goes forth in the name of Jesus, it will pierce into the heart of everyone present in the name of Jesus. In the name Every contrary spirit will bow to the spirit of a living God in the name of Jesus that will be present to break every yoke in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, O Lord. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers, O God. We bless and exalt your holy name. Let us in one or two minutes, let us thank God for today's fellowship, for today's service. Let us thank God for this gathering. It shall be unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Even the little time that we have tonight together to share, to fellowship together, the presence of God and the power of God will move mightily in the name of Jesus. That it will be shared even abroad that people will say, oh my God, I have to be coming to these Friday meetings in the name of Jesus because the word of God will be present. The word of God will flow to correct, to direct, to, re, to, to, re, to, to, to even, even make amend in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for tonight. We give you praise and glory, O God. We bless you, O Lord, Father, for your presence tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, for what you are doing in our midst. Father, for what you are doing in our lives. Father, what you are doing in our families, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Father, for your word. Father, we hold on to your word. Father, we hold on to your word, O Lord. Your word is our final authority, O God. Your word is our final authority. You said it, that settles it, and we believe it, and it's working for us, O Lord. Father, we stand on your word because it's our foundation, O God. Father, we give you praise, O Lord. We bless you for tonight. We exalt and glorify your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, before I come down, just because of the good news that I had that I had this evening, I am so overjoyed. I am so glad. And we, I want to thank God. I want us all to thank God for the good news. I don't know if I should share it, but it's the good news that has happened this evening to one of us. I have been praying for them throughout, and I have been in connection with them throughout. And the news has come, and I'm so glad. So we're just going to thank God. For as one of us has has gotten that good news. So the good news will spread to all families in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to thank God and bless him for all that he is doing. Our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. Father, we thank you. We bless you, O Lord. We thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our midst. Father, what you are doing in our center of life, church, O Lord. Father, yes, this is a church of the living God. Your presence is here, O Lord. This is a living church and we are testimony. We, are, we, are, we can testify 
glorify, O Lord, of your goodness, O Lord, of your goodness towards us, O Lord, O Lord, o Lord my God. We thank you, Father, for every family, O Lord, of Center of Life Church, everyone that is represented here, O Lord, that is a member of this church, that identifies with this local assembly, O Lord, Center of Life Church, this church that you are building, O God, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. We thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our midst. We give you praise and glory, O Lord. Hallowed be your name, Father. We thank you, O Lord, my God, for every child in the womb, every baby in the womb, they shall all come forth in due time in the name of Jesus. And the bed, their birth and the experience of their mothers, I keep praying, O Lord, and I know you will do it, shall be that experience of, those, of that of the Hebrew women. It shall be quick and it will be easy and they will testify of your goodness. Thank you, Jehovah God, my Father. You have done it again and we are forever grateful, O Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the protection. We thank you, O Lord, for the gift of life. We give you praise and glory, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we have our seat, let's just take this song of worship, if you don't mind. The fact that we are here this evening is a testimony of the fact that God is a good God. Whatever the enemy had planned during the course of the week didn't materialize. Amen. God is a good God. Hallelujah. So let's just give him just one or two songs and just appreciate him for his faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Our souls, our souls have found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord. Thanks. Stand. Oh yes, we give you for answered prayers for all yes you you have done we are so blessed we are so blessed our souls our souls have found rest oh lord we give you thanks we are saying thank you jesus Oh, thank you, our Lord, we are saying, come on, let's worship, hallelujah. Oh, thank as the Lord be good to you. Oh, we are saying, thank you, our God, we are saying, Jesus, thank you, our God. For your mercies, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. For protection, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Come on, somebody. As the Lord be good to you, hallelujah. Saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. For provision, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. For deliverance, thank you, Father. My Lord, we are saying thank you, G. Thank you, thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. 
just go ahead and just bless him one minute just thank him one minute just thank him for his faithfulness towards you and your family thank him for answered prayers these prayers we have prayed we have interceded on behalf of the program we have on uh, on sunday evening yes we are going out there to eat just we thank god for answered prayers thank god for the souls that will be saved thank god for the souls that is going to pull to us in that area in that community thank god for the holy spirit that has gone ahead of us to cause all crooked paths to be straightened thank god for these angels that has gone ahead of us yes to cause situations and circumstances to make people to be a, available for that program yes lord we thank you we give you praise lord yes lord we believe you lord we believe your word and we thank you lord for answered prayers Lord, we thank you for how you have been so good to us uh, as individuals, as families, as a church. Lord, we thank you for you are a good God, you are a good Father. We appreciate you this evening. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God is good. God is good. All the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, welcome to his presence. I just want to share briefly before we, <coughs> you know, go ahead to pray and uh, believe God for what he has to do and what he's already done to be manifested in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, so tonight I want to talk briefly about a word I call uh, expectation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Expectation. You know, if um, I, I've shared briefly about this, you know, in the Brothers Fellowship, but I want to just, you know, share with us, you know, on a wider level. Uh, because I believe, you know, strongly that for God to do anything in your life or in our midst, you know, there has to be an expectation. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you with me this evening? Praise the Lord. Now, what is the definition of expectation? If you want to write, can you write? It says, that's one of the definitions I pulled up, you know, from some, you know, from the, under the dictionary. He said, expectation is defined as a strong belief that something will happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A strong belief that what? Something will what? Happen. Expectation. A strong belief that what? Something will what? Happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And of course, the fact that you have expectation is the testimony of the fact that you have faith. Amen. Because without faith, there can be no word, expectation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, if there's no faith, there's, word, there's no word, expectation. I mean, how can you expect anything if you don't have any faith, if you don't, if you don't have hope? I mean, but if you have expectation, that alone is a testimony of the fact that you have what? Faith. Praise the Lord. And we know that with faith, all things are what? Possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you go to a restaurant, for instance, you are hungry and you're walking into a restaurant. What is your expectation when you are coming out of that restaurant? That you be what? You be food, right? Amen. Okay. If you go to, say, you are attending a a, a class, for instance, let's say you are attending. A, uh, our prof, Samuji's class, and you need calculus, you are there to study calculus. What's your expectation when you go to that class? That when you are leaving that class, you what? You understand what? Calculus or statistics. Praise the Lord. You are opening that door, you are entering that place. What's in your mind? I need to understand this thing, right? That's your expectation. That when I'm leaving that place, I will what? I will understand calculus. Praise the Lord. Now, if you go and see a a doctor, for instance, God forbid that you, are, you have some things you have to deal with. 
and go, go, walk into his office, you know, what do you expect? You expect him to give you a, a solution when you're leaving the office. Praise the Lord. Same thing, if you go and see any professional, when you go into that office, you're expecting to get something out when you're coming back. Praise the Lord. So there's an expectation in your mind. And, okay, even a very common one, if you walk into the bank, which I know some of us have done, you know, you go there, you have an expectation in your mind to get certain things out, right? Now, if you go into that, as you're walking through the doors of that bank, what's in your mind is what you are going there for, right? And you expect to get a solution when you're coming out, right? Now, if you go into that place and you meet, you meet with the officers or you meet with whoever is supposed to be in charge of what you intend to get, and you met with that person and you didn't get satisfactory you know, result or answer, then you want to what, escalate or you know, uh, complain or do something, yeah? Praise the Lord. But the point is that when you are going to that bank, you have an expectation to come out of that bank, either with a bank loan or with a mortgage or with, or with your cash. You know, you want to, I mean, you have money in the bank, you want to you know, pull out cash, right? So there's an expectation in your mind, you're walking to that place. Praise the Lord. So expectation is what we do every day. Praise the Lord. Do you all understand that? Now, the question I want to ask you is, when you are walking into a church, what is your expectation? Praise the Lord. When you are walking into, right, from that gate, from the door, first door, second door, and you are coming into the service, what is your expectation? Praise the Lord. Because this is very paramount in the sense that our expectation determines our manifestation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, because, uh, I mean, if you go through some scriptures, which we're going to do right now, um, let's look at Psalm 62, verse 5. Bless God, Sister Margaret, just, you know, with just a confirmation of the word tonight. That, that scripture, you, you know, you read earlier on, Romans 8, 19, was my second scripture. Praise the Lord. I say, this is, this is God. Amen. But Psalm 62, verse 5 says, my soul, wait thou only upon who? God. For my expectation is from who? From him. Praise the Lord. So we have someone that we have to place our expectation on. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter what we are believing God for. It doesn't matter what we are trusting God for. It doesn't matter what the thing is. You have to have what? Expectation. And the expectation we are having is not based on man. Praise the Lord. And we are admonished in the scripture that we should not place our what? Our hope in what? In men. Praise the Lord. The psalmist says, my expectation is from who? God. Praise the Lord. So that's, that's very fundamental. So in the Old Testament, we have that. But what I'm really concerned about this evening is active expectation. Amen. Expectation, I would say expectation per, per second. Let me put it that way. Or per as you go on, on, a, on a daily basis. Amen. Because you see, we, have, we all have, if, if I give us a list, now we all have a list of what we are believing God for. Am I correct? But what is your expectation actively in those lists? And I can guarantee you, if, I, if you write your list now, some of them, you, don't even, you can't even remember the last time you thought about them manifesting. Am I correct? Am I right? So you see, but how, how would those things happen if you don't even need the thing? You're not even expecting that those things that you have in your list will happen. Praise the Lord. So you are just believing that by chance, by chance, God will be merciful. You know, down the road, something will happen. But you see, tonight, I want us to, you know, kind of um, be, to see the necessity to really uh, get our expectation up in terms of those things that are very urgent and we know that we really need them to move forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I believe strongly that if you don't have expectation, that means you don't have faith. And the Bible says without faith, you cannot what? Please God. So forget about your answers, I mean, coming to you or your prayers being answered because faith is not there. 
But the fact that you have expectation is a proof that you have faith. Amen. And it's just a matter of time that what? That will be a manifestation of those things you are believing God for. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if we look at the book of Romans 8, 19. That's, I want to you know, let us know why I was looking, really looking at this. It said, for the earth, for the whole earth, right? For the earnest expectation of the creation, eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God. Now, I was asking myself, you know, even back in the days when, you know, as a, a youth copper, you know, back, in, you know, where we are, where we are well, most of us are from Nigeria, we have to serve, you know, one year thing, right? I remember most of the miracles and instant prayers being answered that I saw was not when we had, you know, uh, ministry within the church. Because in, in, in our Coppers Fellowship, we had, we are going, we are ministering, we go to, we travel. We went to, if you know, the, the, the West African coast, we went to Benin Republic, Togo, uh, you know, just like weekend like this, we just, you know, we bond all, we just drive in, in the van, we praise the Lord. So, to a place we have to go, we pack, we would have arranged schools, the schools and like, accommodate us. But as quite in those, in those missions that we go out for, right? Even in some places, we have to use boats, canoe. There's no, you can't reach them by road. You have to, you know what I mean? You, you, you go through boats, you know? But I think I can testify. Praise the Lord. So you see, in those places, I discovered that some of the miracles, creative miracles I saw and I, that I've seen in my life happen in those places. And the Lord was telling me, because these are creations and creatures, they are, you know, their expectation. You know, we, you know, because sometimes, you know, we become too familiar with God's word and God's presence and God's, do you get my point? God's church. So we don't have that expectation of anything happening. Praise the Lord. We come to church, we just, like, you know, normally, you know, we come made out of, you know, just fellowship and, you know, and we are gone. But you see, those ones, when they know that some, something is coming to town, you know, some group of people that are coming to town, because we have sent emissaries, we have sent some people ahead of us, we have sent people who know the community to go there and, you know, publicize, and some group of people are coming. We have some, amongst our doctors also, we go with some medical supplies and all that to minister, because as we pray, we also minister. But you see, there, so there's an expectation in that village that some group of people are coming. By the time we just reach there and we start, you know, we set up our, our equipment and stage and we start preaching, you know, ah, you see miracles happening. You know, don't just, you know, just listen, just start coming to my mind when I just meditate on this. I will never forget the one I still remember up to today. This is almost how many years ago. One old lady, she was, one of her eyes was blind, one of her legs, she couldn't walk. You know, we stayed, we just, we, we just preached and preached and then we prayed. You know, lay hands on them and, and that was it. In the 5 a.m., before we could wake up, because we, so we, we stay in a, in a school. They give us a school, we stay in the, in the classroom or whatever. We just put our, in these missions, right? So we just, whatever we get, we, we sleep on the bare floor. We, whatever, it's, we are mission field, we don't care. While we are sleeping, 5 a.m., we hear somebody singing and dancing and was from the village where she, her house was. She was singing and dancing and coming to, to wake us up. When we opened, when we all came out, we saw that this lady that was blind, I couldn't walk, she was the one. You know, she, she danced all the way from her, her home to meet us, to tell her how God has what? Healed her and her food that, was, that she couldn't move, she couldn't even, she was being helped that day, was perfect, praise the Lord. I said, my God. So God was just you know, reminding me of those kind of, this, I can imagine she had expectation, as I said, praise the Lord. So my question is, what expectation do we have? Same thing, if you, see, if you go to you see crusades, you see that's where you see some wonderful miracles, powerful miracles, praise the Lord. Creative miracles, I want to say tangible, visible miracles. Praise the Lord. The fact is that we, as believers, we shouldn't be too what, familiar with the presence of God. Amen. Because some of us have some things we have to deal with. And yet, we, because our familiarity and our dist and there are distractions all around us. Amen. We allow those distractions. And then our expectation is not high up there 
for us to capture what God has made available for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because as the word is coming, as prayers are, prayers is going on, if you have expectation, amen, I mean, nothing is impossible. Praise the Lord. I just remember last, our last uh, communion, I remembered, that was over a month ago, right? Most a month ago. I remember, prior to that time, a couple of, for a couple of weeks, I've been having this throat pain. It's not sore throat. You know what I mean? I didn't bother telling my wife or whatever. I didn't. Because I just wondered, it was not sore throat. It's not, I don't have, you know, it's not cough. You know what I mean? It's not sore throat, but it's something I just feel it in there. And we just, I've been praying and binding and praying and binding, and it wasn't happening. But when we were coming for communion that day, that was my prayer. I said, Lord, as I take this communion today, this thing is, is dead from its root. I don't care what it is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that was my, that was exactly where I, I put it. Right? I was, you know, I was standing here. I said, as, I, as Pastor was preaching, and the Pastor was ministering in the communion, the words was encouraging us to, you know, sp- you know speak forth in our, in our, what we believe in God for. I said, Lord, because I, at the point they were saying, are you sure you shouldn't go and check this in the hospital? Maybe it's, uh, you know, you know, somebody, because you can't, it's not, I can eat well, I can swallow well, nothing, no, but I just feel some pain in, I don't, somewhere, in, somewhere, you know. So I just said, Father, tonight, as I take this communion, wherever this thing is coming from, it will die from its root. Praise the Lord. Because I had a spectrum that was coming in. Praise the Lord. Because really and truly, I've been, you know, this, this word, expectation, I've been going through my spirit. I've been kind of brewing over it. You know, so I, want, you know, I, 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 so I acted on it that last communion we had. Praise the Lord. And do you know that after I just did, you know, I did that, we took communion, and, and that was it. I didn't remember anything anymore. It was a week after that the Lord just reminded me, you can't really, and that was it. I didn't remember that the thing was gone. Praise the Lord. And up to today, up to today, gone forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, what I'm saying, if you have expectation, there are certain things that are born in your heart. There are certain things you need to deal with. Long-standing issues, long-standing prayers. Don't just let it, you know, just say, well, maybe when God, you know, uh, you know, maybe, you know, you know, you know, uh, and where well, we keep just, but let us have tangible, active expectation. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we look at the book of Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, from verse 8 to 9. I believe this is, this is one scripture pastor I've always, always used, and I think this is paramount here. Yeah? Bible says, you know, Acts 14 from verse 8 to 9. It says, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was what? Was sitting. A cripple from where? From his mother's womb. Who had what? Had never walked. Verse 9. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be what? Healed. How did Paul, you know, you know, perceive that he had faith to be healed. There was an expectation because if you have faith in there, expectation will, there's a, there, there, there will be an expectation in your, your countenance, in your, in your face, in whatever you are doing, praise the Lord. There's, a, there's a, a, a way that expectation is revealed in you, in your personnel, praise the Lord. What the Bible says, the Bible says, and Paul was said, if you continue that, and Paul said with a loud voice, stand up, straight on your feet, and he leaped and what? And walked. Now tell me, if he wasn't expecting anything that day, praise the Lord. If he wasn't expecting anything, I wasn't paying attention to what was being taught. Praise the Lord. That's why sometimes we come to church, don't let nobody distract you. Praise the Lord. We all have different things we are dealing with. So it depends on what you, you know, somebody said, all I need is a word. And truly and frankly, all we need sometimes is just a word from the Lord. Amen. And that word can come at any time. It could be when the praise worship is going on. It could be when uh, the, the offering is being taken. It could be when pastor is ministering. It could be when somebody is speaking about, you know, uh, uh, from the scriptures, praise the Lord. And if you are attentive and expectant, you will grab hold of that word. Amen. And you will run with that word and that will be a manifestation in your life. Praise the Lord. So you see, expectation is key. And now, I was, as I mentioned to the brother, I said, look, now you imagine. If all of us, right as we are now, we all have expectation. Okay, 
expectation for people to be healed tonight. We all came all have expectation for people to be saved tonight. So you can imagine the, the let me call it as the, you know, the word, the secular word, they'll say, you have positive energy in the room. Do you get my point, the point I'm making? That is, well, for us, it's faith. It's tangible faith. But it's expectation. Praise the Lord. But if it's only two people that have expectation here, and then the other three don't even know why they are here. The other four, they're just, you know, uh, they are thinking of, you know. Or, now, tell me, how will power be revealed in the house? Praise the Lord. Do you get the point I'm making? Now, if you go to the stadium, or you, of course, recently, Raptors, they won. Why do you think they, 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 they won? Sometimes it's part of their skills, right? But apart from their skills, the fans had expectation. Praise the Lord. The fans had expectation. And, and, and they could feel the expectation. Praise the Lord. Because your place was packed with, they would call it positive energy. Amen. You know, if those fans were booing and cursing, and you think they will have... They, they will not win. They will, lose, they will lose momentum. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you see, expectations have a long way, you know, for us to see the manifestation of God in our midst. We, both as individuals and corporately, need to have an atmosphere of expectation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's very key, very vital, and very paramount. If we also look at Acts chapter 3 from verse 5. Acts 3 from verse 5. Or let's say from verse 4. Let's go back to verse 4. Okay, this same. Oh, let's go to 3. Let's read the whole 3. 3 verse 3. Talking about the, the, the crippled man, right? At the gate called Beautiful. It says, Who seen Peter and John? about to go into the temple, asked for arms. Praise the Lord. Verse 4. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Praise the Lord. So he what? He gave them his what? Attention. Expecting to what? Receive something from them. Praise the Lord. So that guy had expectation, even though he was he didn't know what was going to come, but he had a spot, expectation. Praise the Lord. When he said, look at us. Amen. Now, you can imagine the other guy that Paul, Paul, Bible says Paul perceived he has this, you know, uh, what's it called? He had faith to what to be healed. And Paul said, be healed, right? Now, tell me, if that person was not paying attention, he Paul said, be healed. Will he receive, will he, will he connect? No, because there are two, I mean, it's a transaction that's happening. One is giving, one is receiving. So that's where the meet, and then boom. There's a manifestation. Praise the Lord. Some of us, we are in church. When pastors say, amen, some people say, okay, you know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some people, they say, shout amen. They are doing something else. Because their, their mind is not here. When they say, you know, there was, praise, okay, let's not get to that. Amen. You know, pastor said something, and then somebody has shouted something, and we're supposed to be saying something, we're supposed to be mad. But you see, the fact is, the person is not paying attention. So if you're not paying attention, even when the word is going on, how will you receive from God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Even the Bible said, Jesus' own community, his own people, they could not receive from him. Jesus could not do anything because they had no expectation of him. Amen. They say, isn't that carpenter? Praise the Lord. He's not that carpenter. I mean, there was no expectation from him. I mean, from them. So, he could even, Jesus, the Son of God, the mighty, <laughs> the mighty Son of God, he couldn't help them. So, you can imagine how, you know, how will even if God send you a minister and your destiny is in, in that man's world that day, he can't help you. So the word is there, but your expectation is nowhere to be found. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it's very key, very important that we watch. We pay close attention to expectation. I mean, if you are expecting someone to be saved, you've been praying for that person. You've been praying for that person. Because I've heard testimonies of, you know, how God miraculously saved some people. Their parents have been praying for them, praying for them, praying for them, praying for them. You know, the boy is going up and down, up and down, up and down. But he had been praying and believing God. And then he invited him to church because he wouldn't listen to them preach. 
So the day he came to church, that parents had expectation that this day, today, now he didn't tell the man of God who was ministering that my son who, has, who is, you know, rebel is in church today. He didn't tell him that. But the, the expectation of the parent, praise the Lord, the expectation of the parent pulled out the word from the man of God and spoke the word that causes conversion in the heart of that person, of the young man. Praise the Lord. That's expectation. Some people don't bring people to church because they don't have expectation that those people can be saved. Praise the Lord. Because if you have expectation that people can be healed in church, people can be saved in church, people can be transformed and their life, you know, transformed for good, you, will go, you, know, you go out of your way to bring them. Praise the Lord. Some people don't bother because they, they just, there's no expectation that something will happen in church. Praise the Lord. My, my concern tonight is, do we have expectation? Hallelujah. Because frankly and truly, I've come to discover that without expectation, forget it. You know, we may pray, 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 pray. As we are, we prayed now, right? We prayed and believe God. We're going to age us on Sunday evening. Are you individually expecting that God will bring somebody? Praise the Lord. Do you have that expectation? Lord, Lord you know, I'm going to, you know, God is going to bring somebody. Even though you are not going to bring someone from this angle, but somebody that God, you know, because you see, all those are the things that the angels work with. You know, your expectation, that's your, as I said before, don't, don't forget, expectation is an evidence that you have faith in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So do you have expectation that ages, people will be saved in ages. Amen. God will draw people, you know, for that program, and there will be a manifestation in their life. Do you have expectation that that program will be what? Successful. Amen. That's what we're talking about tonight. Expectation. Very important and very crucial for the church today. Do you have expectation to be healed? Or do you just come to church and it's another Sunday? You know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes if you are not feeling too well, you may want to stay at home, but I, I, I don't know. If I'm not feeling too well, I told somebody, I, I, I'd rather not come to church than to stay at home. Praise the Lord. Because I have a speech that I'll be here in church. Otherwise, I'll carry myself and go to the hospital. Because you either go to a church or you go to the hospital. Praise the Lord. Yeah, because why are you stay at home? Unless you say one of the rest. Well, I don't know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm just, that's just me. But the fact is, we, we need to you know, have understanding that the church of God, the house of God, you know, is a place of refuge, a place of solution, a place where things happen. Let's when you come, we come to church, let's come expecting things to happen in our life. Amen. For our life to be transformed, for solution to come to our situation. Praise the Lord. That's the whole point I'm trying to make tonight. Praise the Lord. Don't just stroll into church like one of those normal days. Don't just get ready from, I mean, get ready from Monday to Sunday and then just walk into church. No, if something that you've been dealing with something throughout the week, when you are coming to church, say, Father, I'm coming to church today. This situation will be dealt with. I receive understanding as to what direction to go. That's expectation. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm going for an interview tomorrow. You know, you are praying during the week. God, as I come to church, pastor will speak something or somebody will say something that will give me direction as to what step to take. That is what expectation. Now, if you're not expectant, even when the word comes, you will not receive it. You will know that this is your word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? It's very paramount. Praise the Lord. The Lord give us wisdom. Amen. Now, like the issue, the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says, she said to herself, that's part of expectation. If I can but what? Touch the hem of his garment. I shall be what? Made whole. Because that's part of expectation. I mean, if you vocalize something, that means you are expecting it. As I said, the definition of expectation was what? A strong word believed that something will what? Happen. That's expectation. That's the definition. I mean, the dictionary definition of expectation. A strong belief that something will what? Happen. That's exactly what the woman with the issue of blood did. So she had a strong belief that something was going to happen that day for her. Now look at the scripture, you know, Old Testament. Look at Hannah. The, that day Hannah was going to, is it um, Shiloh, right? The Bible says she, she went there with a a, a woman of you know with, with, a, with a heavy heart to pray. She had an expectation that today, if I pray, that's what she was praying and praying. Something must give. Praise the Lord. And things 
you know, things do happen when we, you know, define our what? Our day of miracles. We have to come to a point. Sometimes you define your day of what? Miracle. You define your day of deliverance. You say, today, I'm not leaving this place until I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why how, that's how I became filled with the Holy Ghost. When I was still a, 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 in secondary school, I went to one room. My, one of my friends' home. Then I was still with my parents. When I left my parents' home, I went to my, one of my friends' house. It was the bachelor there. So he went to work. So I just took, I took the book, one book. The man God uses. I was telling my wife, you know, somebody that also just me. I started reading that book. I said, today, this Holy Spirit, I must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. That's, that's what? Expectation. So I, I stayed there until I was filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Amen. So you, sometimes you have to define the day of your miracle. Praise the Lord. You know, it's allowed. God, you can define the day of a miracle. That's what all these people did in the scripture. Go and look at them. The man with the issue of blood, that's what he did. Praise the Lord. Many other examples in the scriptures, that's what they do. They did. They define the day of their miracles. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe uh, the Lord will quicken, you know, in our heart more understanding regarding that. Amen. Shall we rise up on our feet? Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Do you have expectation tonight? What is that long-standing need, a long-standing prayers that you've not even bothered to really pray about? You know, you've just allowed it to keep going on and going on. You know, you're not saying, I know this, as Pastor will say, this far and what? No further. That, you have to come to that point. This far and what? No further. Until you get to that point, that's expectation. I said, because you are now, that's, expect, that's active expectation. Praise the Lord. Your expectation has to be active to, be, to have a manifestation. Amen. This far and no further. So what are the, what are the things you have, have you been expecting? What are the things you have been expecting that has been prolonged by the enemy? That has been prolonged. I'm talking about personal issues now. In your family, in your home, in your career, in whatever it is. What is this? Do you have expectation that those things can be accomplished. Do you have expectation? Active expectation. Let's begin to pray right now. If you have somebody standing by you, just hold that person and begin to pray with that person. Pray that, Father, activate my expectation in this area. Just hold somebody and begin to pray. That's it together in the name of Jesus. Pray in the understanding, pray in, you know, in, in the spirit, whatever you want to pray. Just pray. Pray for you know, a few minutes in the name of Jesus. Father, quick him on you know, my expectation regarding this issue. In the name of Jesus, begin to meditate on the scriptures. Yeah, give me word that will cause my, you know, my, my faith to be you know, activated and cause expectation to burst forth. That there should be a manifestation of this, you know, these answers. Do you have expectation tonight? Expectation that God will change your situation. Expectation that God is able to, to, to make provision where there has been no provision. Expectation that God will take you far above. Yes, above your peers. Miraculously. Expectation of sudden breakthrough. Expectation. Libra kuke libra ni masata yaba. Libre ko poshi kete libra ni masiko to libre ni masakaria. Mambra la kakuri da masike ya la basita ya. Do you have expectation to be healed? Do you have expectation to be healed? Do you have expectation to have that, that, that prayer is answered? Whatever that prayer is. Do you have expectation to have a spouse if that's what you are believing God for? Or have you just left the matter well? When he comes, he comes. Or when she comes, she comes. Do you have expectation? That or something, what is that thing that you need that you, you are believing God for and trusting God? Do you have expectation that that thing can happen or will happen? Yes, Lord, awaken our expectation. Quicken our spirit. Yes, cause us to see, Lord, as if all things are possible. We have expectation that the outreach in Ajax will be successful. 
Yes, we have expectation that the Ajax campus and Milton campus will grow and grow. For Lord, we add unto us daily. Bible says, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as need to be saved. Let's ask that we have. We, we, let's declare we have expectation that these things will happen because this is what the Lord has will concerning us. Libra ne koshi ke teri bra la ma kaso krele kandari ala ba. Ribra koske libra na kasi ke teri bra kapaya lios ke diye. Reba ba ba kuste ke diya. What are the expectations you have for your children? What are the expectations you have for your brothers and sisters? What are the expectations you have for your families? Inda kalibre ke tali bra di kapu yali. Do you have any expectation at all? Let the kalibre la ba kate ya. It is time to awaken your expectation. It is time to say yes, yes, I believe, yes. I know. Yes, you are called the ke karus ke teri ba yala se. Rabu ko se me krati ko libre le kataya le ke pre le kapaya. Yes, I have expectation that my brother will be free. Yes, free from this, free from that. Whatever it is that you are believing God for, I have expectation na ma ke te kalabaya that my mother will be healed. Whatever you are believing God for, yes, say it in the name of Jesus. Le bre ke paduri le ke pali abroske. Your expectation is not based on your power. It's not based on what you you think. But your expectation is based on the word of God. It is based on the promises that can never fail. Your expectation is based on God who is. Yes, and what he can do. Willing and able. Bible says his eyes go to and fro the earth. Looking for those who will make themselves make himself strong on their behalf. Do you have expectation that when you graduate, you will have a good job? Do you have expectation? Do you have expectation that God will cause wealth and riches to abound in your house? That you have more than enough? For these are the promises of God unto us. Do you have expectation of nothing missing, nothing broken? Do you have expectation of total health uh, from the crown of your hair to the soles of your feet? Uh, according to the word of the Lord, the Bible says, He take away sickness and disease from the midst of them, and there is no feeble amongst us. Do you have expectation uh, like the Hoopoe women uh, before the Bible says, before the God, they brought forth? Uh, yes, yes, do you have expectation? Ruko moske te ribre koko shite Ramma kandingro koko kandingro loko shata libia Rakate ya Do you have expectation that God can do what he said he will do? Marigele koko ribo koshi ya The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie Nor the sons of men that he should repent If God said it, he will do it If he promise, he will bring it to pass All we need is expectation Do you have expectation tonight? Libre ke paru koshi ke te ribre gadaba kushi ya It doesn't matter what is falling behind you Falling in front of you but with God, all things are possible. You have the gift of exemption. The yeah, Bible says, you only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. A thousand shall fall on your left side, a thousand by your right side, but it shall not come near you. Do you have expectation to be exempted from every evil and from every calamity and sudden destruction? Do you have expectation to be delivered? Do you have expectation that your need will be met? That your need will Do you have expectation that your need will be met? That your need will be supplied? That before there is a need, God will bring forth. God will cause men to bring forth supernaturally to bring what you need. Do you have expectation of favor that God will cause somebody somewhere you don't even know to favor you? Do you have expectation tonight? Do you have expectation for Sunday service? That men and women will come from the different part of the city to be available to come to fellowship here in this house on Sunday. That there are signs and wonders in this house. Miracles of healing and deliverance, of salvation. Do you have expectation that men will be saved in the house on Sunday? Do you have expectation that women and men, supernaturally, God will pull them from the nook and crannies of this city and bring them into this house? Do you have expectation? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom and understanding. Yes, Lord, give us wisdom and understanding. And give us the grace, oh God, to fan our expectation into fear. Yes, fan our expectation, oh Lord. 
Rei Gebre Koposhi Yala Basikaya. As Paul admonished Timothy, find it, yes, find it. Let the flame burn. Let your expectation burn. So that when the manifestation comes, you will catch it and you grab it. Holy Spirit, give us the grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this weekend. We thank you, Lord, God, for the miraculous things you will do. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers concerning Ajax. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers concerning our service on Sunday. Thank you for our brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies, oh God, have abounded throughout this week. Lord, we give you praise for divine favor, supernatural intervention. Lord, we thank you because we are expectant and we are seeing it. As pastor, I've declared that this month of June, indeed, is our month of testimony. And that has already created the expectation from the beginning of this month. And, we have, we, and we've seen a lot of manifestation of those testimonies. Lord, we thank you for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight. As we live here, we live in your presence. We live, Lord God, in your grace. Tabernacle with us, Holy Spirit, and bring us home safely. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed evening. Turn to somebody and greet and appreciate the person and see the person on Sunday. Let them know you see them on Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell the person, have great expectation. Have great expectation. Hallelujah. God is able. Amen. God is able.